Why do your websites look terrible and other people's websites look good? I decided to take it upon myself to creep on other people's websites and see what they do that makes their websites look so good. I was actually surprised by the outcome of doing this and how simple the solution was. One of the solutions, one of the solutions. If you've got stunning images, they do a lot of the work for you. But what if your website doesn't have images? This is the trick that I have found that these crafty web developers, crafty designers use to make their software as a service websites look really good. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it now. I've got a hero component here, it's gonna work nicely on any sort of section component, but it works well on a hero component, so we're just gonna use this as an example. Let's have a look, it looks very simple, okay? So that's what it looks like, and I'm gonna show you how we can make it look amazing, make it look professional, just elevate the whole thing. And the way we do that is we put a background. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I've got to go and find a flipping background now, I've got to find an image to put in the background. No, 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 look at this, this is amazing. So some of you may be aware of how SVGs work. Um, so they're scalable vector graphics and we can actually code our own SVG. And that sounds like an absolute nightmare, but I'm just gonna show you how easy this actually is to do. So the first thing we wanna do, let's just give ourselves a little bit of space. We wanna actually create an SVG here. So look, just look at the structure of this uh, hero component. We've got this outer div here, and then we've got all the content for our component there, for our hero there. So we are gonna put this within our outer div. So we're gonna say SVG, and what we wanna do is we just wanna give it some classes. So we're gonna be using Tailwind, as always. If you're not using Tailwind, I don't really know what you're up to. I don't know what to say to you. Go and have a look in the mirror and just contemplate your life choices because you should probably be using Tailwind. Anyway, now that's out of the way. So we wanna basically make this SVG fit the entire background of this div here. So we're gonna make it absolute. We're going to say inset zero. We're gonna say size full. So that's gonna make it oh, the height and width of this div here and let's have a look at what we've got from doing that so well, let's give it a stroke actually uh, so we're going to say stroke and we'll just say black so we can see what's going on here and now within here we want to create a rectangle so rect and we want to make it the entire height same height and width as the svg so we're going to say height equals 100 percent width equals 100% and we'll give it a stroke width of one for now just so you can see it but we're going to change that to zero shortly one other thing we need to actually make this div relative and let's see what we've got so now we have this svg covering the entire div here. That's not ideal, is it? Because we want to be able to see what is there. So if we just put some Z indexes on this, so we're going to say this, it wants to be, we want this all to be above our SVG. So if we just say Z-2 and make this Z-1 and make this relative as well. And now we can see we've got this above here. Uh, the fonts aren't great, so let's just make that zero and worry about that shortly. So this obviously doesn't look good, and that's just because it is a black square covering the entirety of this div or the background of this div. But what we're gonna do, instead of having this black background, we're gonna say fill. Well, we can change the fill here. So if we said fill red, it would go red right but we're going to actually change that to a pattern so what we're going to do is up here we're going to say defs oh we're going to say pattern and we're giving it an id so this id can be anything you want it to be so we're going to say my pattern 
and then we can use this ID here as our fill. So if we just put hash my pattern. So now this pattern is gonna fill the background of our SVG. So we don't have a pattern yet, but this is exactly what we're gonna do now. So it's actually really easy to do. All we need to do is give this pattern a height, a width. So we'll make it 100 for simplicity, width also 100. And you're gonna see how changing these values is gonna affect things if we want to shortly. Uh, we want an X starting position, we'll say it's X zero, Y zero. And then we wanna say pattern units. And we say user space on use. And that basically just defines the coordinate system that we're gonna use. So now we have this pattern, but we haven't actually drawn anything in the pattern. This is just the outside of the pattern. Now this pattern is gonna be a square because we've got 100 by 100. So whatever we put in this pattern, whatever shape we make, is gonna just repeat every 100. So let's just do something and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we want, to basically create the most simple pattern we can. So the most simple pattern we can do is probably like just a line, but that's probably gonna look a bit rubbish. So we are just gonna have a grid pattern in the background, just squares, okay? So the way we do that is we say path, and then you use this D for draw. And this always confused me when I saw it because I never actually looked into how it worked or what it was doing when they had all this code in an SVG, but it's actually mind-blowingly easy. So there's a few commands that you can use, and we are just gonna use M and L. So M moves the pen, so it's as if we've got our grid. Do you know what? I might actually do an overlay of a nice little diagram while I talk. I might not though, so if that doesn't appear, don't worry. Um, so we've got our, our grid, our square grid, which is 100 by 100. So you can move a pen to a coordinate on that grid. So M will move the pen point to that coordinate and it won't draw a line, it will just move it. And then you can say L and another coordinate and it will draw a line from that first coordinate to that second coordinate. So hopefully that makes sense, but if not, just watch what I do and it's gonna make sense. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna say M and we wanna say the starting coordinate. So we've got our square, and we wanna actually put our starting coordinate just outside of the square so that these lines overlap. Because if we don't, it sometimes causes a weird little glitch in between each pattern section. So here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna say minus one. So this is our X coordinate, our first X coordinate. And then we wanna say 50, because we wanna come halfway down the page. So essentially what we wanna create is an X. We wanna create an X because that pattern repeated is gonna cause us to have all of these squares. All right, hopefully that makes sense. It's gonna, it's gonna, I promise. Okay, so this is our first coordinate, minus one, 50. And then we wanna say L, so this is gonna draw a line to our next coordinate, and we wanna go all the way across the square. So we wanna go to just outside of the furthest X coordinate. So we wanna say 101, and then we wanna say 50 again. So that's our Y coordinate, 50. That's our first line drawn. So do you know what? Let's save it and see what happens if we do that. Okay, I've made a little error. I haven't put URL here in the brackets. That should work now. So that should now show our horizontal lines, but we wanna have vertical lines as well. So what we do is we can actually do another path. So we can say path D equals, and now we want to say our X first X coordinate is gonna be 50. <laughs> 50, it can be quite confusing. 50, you have to like visualize it. Uh, and our Y is gonna be minus one. And then we say L and we wanna go all the way to the bottom, but we wanna say in the middle. So we wanna say 50 and then we wanna say 101. So now save that and we should have our grid. Lovely, very nice indeed. And you can make this look a little bit more subtle. You can put a, so if we say we can even change that, but you can put a gradient on it as well, not gradient, sorry, opacity. So you can say 50 and it's more subtle. 
more subtle. So that's quite nice. And something else I have noticed, and this little trick I got from Tailwind UI, so full credit to Tailwind UI. I'm not just gonna exactly copy Tailwind UI because that's not fair to just show their code, but you can use the same techniques they use. So what I'm gonna do is, let's make this a bit more visible again. Uh, let's just make that 200. They do a nice little thing where they actually fill in some of these squares and it just looks good. It just does look good. So the way they do that is they just create another SVG inside this SVG and they use this grid system to figure out, well, Joe, you know I don't know how they do it. They probably actually use a bit of software to draw the stuff. I don't know if they're hand coding it like this, but possibly who knows, but it's quite a nice little skill to have, I've realized. So what they basically do is they put another SVG in here and they basically make the X and Y the same as that. So that's so the pattern doesn't overlap, doesn't look weird on these lines, because what we're gonna essentially do is we're gonna create one square and we're gonna plonk it somewhere in this SVG so that it fits into one of these squares perfectly. So you wanna have your X and Y the same as there, so both of them are zero. So X equals zero, Y equals zero, oh, zero. And you wanna give it a fill. So there's no point just having an empty square with no fill, because it would just look weird. So let's just do that. So if we say fill equals, actually no, we don't do fill. Well, you could do fill, but we're just gonna say class equals fill and we'll just make it pink for now pink 200 and you now need to basically draw this square so you can imagine this grid because we know each one of these squares is 100 by 100 let's just say we want to let's pick one that's going to look good when it's like that let's just say we want to fill in this square here right so bad example because we won't be able to see it on mobile but let's just say we want to fill in this square here okay so we know that looks like 50 150 250 350 if i said this one it's 350 across by 50 down okay so let's try and draw this square <laughs> and see how it looks so we're going to say path equals oh no d equals and we're going to move our pen to 350 across 50 down. Now we don't need to worry about having the minus numbers for this because we actually just want it to sit exactly on that square. So that pen is now here, hopefully. Unless I completely messed it up, the pen is there. So now we want to say L and we want to move it to there. So we're going to add 100 to our X axis. So we're going to say 450 and then we're going to go down 100. So that's going to be 150. And now we want to come back to there. So that's the same as our initial value, 350. So we want to say L, 350. Uh, hang on. So we've gone there. We want to go down there. So yeah. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? This is what I mean. It is a bit confusing, but trust me, you'll get your head around it. So we started there, 350. We've gone to there, 450. We're still at 450. But we've gone down uh, by, okay, yeah, that, that I messed it up there. So the X, the Y didn't change there. So now we're at 150. Sorry, sorry about that. I'm sure you noticed that. But So we started here, 350, 50. 450, 50. 450, 150. And now we're coming back to here. So that is 350, 150. So we say L, 350, 150. And then we want to come back to our starting point, which is this one here. So that is L, 350, 50. And hopefully by some miracle, when I save that, we're going to see I've messed it up. So why have I messed it up? <laughs> so because I put 250, there you go, that's why. So 350. So there you have that. So that looks a bit random, yeah. But what I've noticed, <laughs> Tailwind, for example, do. They, they just use like a really nice subtle 
Tailwind UI, a nice little subtle background color. And I know it's quite random. I do know it's quite random, but it just looks quite good. Now imagine you've got a few of them dotted around. Um, just looks, looks quite good. So that's that. And there is another trick. There's another trick. And I think I maybe came up with this trick. Now I didn't come up with it, but this trick I um, think's pretty good. Um, so at the moment, it's a quite abrupt ending, right? Look, it's just like a dead straight line there. And it just, if you've got another section underneath that doesn't have this pattern, it would just look a bit weird. So what you can actually do is add another, so look, if we look at the structure here, this is our outer div for our section, for our hero. We wanna add another absolute div here. So we're gonna say div class. And what we'll do is we'll basically create a div that runs along the border and it creates a nice gradient to separate the two areas. So it just fades out this line here into the white or into whatever color that you have underneath. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just nice, really. It's just pretty nice. So the way we do that is we say absolute. We need to have the same Z index or higher Z index than our SVG because it needs to essentially be above it. So let's just do Z1 and we want to position it in this back corner, bottom corner, sorry, should I say. So we want to say bottom, zero, left, zero. We want to say width, full. And then in terms of height, it's up to you, but you kind of want to make it work with the padding that you've got on the this div here. So we've got PY16, so that means there's eight there and on a, above small screen 16 so we'll do the same but we'll say um height eight and on a above small screen 16 so let's just see how that looks so height eight small height 16 and just so we can see this we'll just give it a, a really terrible background for now background red 500 Save that and to see what it looks like. So that's what that's looking like. But we want to, as I said, we want to turn that into our nice gradient. So is that right? Am I okay? Am I okay? Is that height actually 16? Why did I think that? Okay, I'm not sure why I thought it was half of that. I, yeah. Anyway, ignore what I said. Then we'll make it. We'll make it 16 and 32. And now instead of having this horrible solid red, we're just gonna actually change that to a gradient. Let's try this then. So we're gonna say BG linear to B. And we're gonna say from none to white. So let's change it. So that's what it currently looks like. If we save that, you can see we've got a nice little transition into the next section. If I make this gray color more obvious, you might be able to see that a bit better. So can you see there? That it is fading into the next section. So you could, in theory, make this higher and make that more of an obvious transition like that. So it's up to you how you do it. Um, that's probably actually a better way of doing it. So yeah, you can mess around with all these different values, colors, all sorts of little other things. Um, I'll show you some other examples that I've done. Um, hopefully I'm showing them on the screen now. I can't bother to show them right now. But uh, yeah, so you can be invented with the shape of the SVG you make, you can, be invented with the colors, you can be invented with all of that stuff and you can start making your websites look like they're really professional. So it is a really easy way of enhancing your websites and making them look less plain, giving them that wow factor. Something else I had the idea of doing was um, just giving them like a, an animation. So if you, you can say animate pulse. And look, that's now pulsing. So, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a bit rubbish, but I'm sure you can get inventive with it and do better things than that. Um, 
But yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. I think you should probably watch this video here because this is Tailwind UI and they actually know what they're doing.